Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Caribbean Life TV. I'm your host, Rose Solo, and as always, I'm here speaking with one of the movers and shakers within our Caribbean diaspora. Please welcome to the show, Shai Averitt. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Now, I know you've had a long day, and I want you to tell us a little bit about that because that was very interesting what you were talking about. But you're here to talk to us about the Legacy Project. But tell everyone your role and um, how you got involved with the Legacy Project. Yep. So I am um, the Senior Community Program and Events Manager um, for Diversity, Inclusion, and Educational uh, events for uh, Microsoft and uh, the legacy part of my job is really to think about students, uh, definitely a, a hard concentration on underrepresented students and to uh, think about what are the needs, what resources do we have here at Microsoft and what type of programming um, or event or curriculum uh, can we create that we can give to all those communities for free? So uh, when Black History Month was approaching uh, and we already knew that we were going to, we were reaching out to museums and we were going to virtualize them just because we understand how important Black History Museums are important, period. Uh, but when we think about uh, schools right now and students not be able to, to go to museums because of the pandemic, um, it, it crushed me a bit. I'm like, I, I know they're not getting going to get the proper education um, at a lot of these schools, or maybe not any. Uh, and that's so we reached out to museums uh, to to um, allow us to come in and virtualize them and offer that out as part of a, a larger virtual experience. But as we were touring, um, we traveled for about forty five days and and filmed in, in in several cities to film all the museums. And as we were touring. Um, I kept hearing maybe every other day there was another first. So it was, you know, oh, this this young uh, Black American was the first to do this or this, you know, and it dawned on me. I was like, I don't want students to feel like Black history is all history and in the past is still being made today. Right. Um, and from that, I said, why don't we create something. Um, I was like, why don't we create some type of virtual gallery or museum where we can take some of these game changers who are doing some amazing things mm -hmm. today in history and be able to honor them properly. And some of them, because they're so new and young, they're not at museums. Uh, but I thought it would be great for young people and older people to be able to see that uh, history is being made every single day. So that is that is what the Legacy Project is. That's an amazing, and it's an amazing project as well. Tell us about some of um, the, the 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 people within the project, some of the people that you are yeah. going to be honoring and, and showcasing. Mm -hmm. um, so the cool thing about the gallery, it has five different sections. Um, so we have our Black Achievers, which is education. Um, we have our Black Boss Moves, which are CEOs or those at the top. Uh, we have our Blacks in Entertainment, uh, which is self-explanatory. We have our Black Justice Week, which is our social justice and politicians and judges. Uh, we have a special gallery called Young, Black, and Gifted, where we honor three just amazing under 21 young people who are just, just making such a difference in the world. And then we have our Black Game Changers, which are those who have done some amazing thing in the, things in the world of sports. Um, and we, uh, for a lot of them, um, it was things that I heard that stood out that I processed probably different than other people. So I remember when I heard um, the young man who was the first African-American valedictorian of Princeton and everybody, you know, celebrating. I was like, that's that's good. Princeton almost right, 100 right. years old. At <laughs> that point. Nobody. Right. Nobody. <laughs> we're, we're brilliant. We're smart. I mean, that's <laughs> not you. Yeah, I was like, but it's it's stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. So I was like, and then I think shortly after Harvard had their first student body president mm -hmm. that was African American, and I'm like, all we do is run stuff. So that's that's interesting. <laughs> so it, it it prompted me to uh, literally some of it. It was a learning piece because I started going on this journey, and I'm like, there is no one who's done this. And transparently, I was we were online probably for two weeks just saying, typing in first African-American or yeah. African-American for the first time yeah. in, in 2000, 2001. I mean, and we came up with this laundry list um, yeah. and, and we literally had 
of over 150. Um, but we said we can't do 150. So let's do 30. Um, and these transparently were the 30 that responded in a positive way and said we would absolutely love to be a part of this project. And we were like, and there it is. Um, but it's a very diverse group of people, just even with the um, the different um, topics or, or kind of genres that we cover because we didn't want it to be one dimensional. Because uh, yeah, so that is that is literally how they got selected. And, and and you're so right with the with the first first. You know, I, I had yeah. this conversation a few months ago because we'd heard started hearing the first, and especially with the election yeah. first, and it was first female and first yeah. this, and it was it was in the the, the brown spectrum first. Yeah. You know. And it was yeah. it, to your point. It's like we've been around and all this time, you know. We we've been here just as long as everybody else. And yeah. the it seems so amazing, but it's good um, that it's recognized and by mm -hmm. a company such, you know, it, it's good it's recognized by a company such as Microsoft, you know, that that's that you're yeah. able to do this, you know, under that company because it just yeah. it just holds more to it that you know these type of companies because it's important right now that the microsoft yes. and, and the gateways and the dells and the apples yes. and whoever the nikes and the the everyone you know support yeah. and it's more than Absolutely. just black history month it's more than just black history month so speak to you said you saw and i'll go back to the the you said you saw 12 um thousand you were with about twelve thousand kids earlier today mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, Whatever we do, make <laughs> that <laughs> that look, that look, that look. Twelve thousand, yeah. twelve thousand. So yeah. one, um, I'm glad you you made it to the call. It, yeah. it's We're almost right? there. <laughs> I won't take, I won't keep up much more of your time. But yeah. what were you doing with the twelve thousand children? And wow. Yeah, it was it was it was actually a beautiful day. Uh, we so the Legacy Project sits sits within kind of my team's official Black History Month programming, um, and that was the virtualization of those museums. So we have thirteen different um, virtual tours, with the Legacy Project being the thirteenth one of different African American museums um, across the country, as well as um, which is the really the other really cool part. Um, is we have um, some amazing fireside chats. So when we go to the Freedom Riders Museum, we get to have a fireside chat afterwards with one of the um, Hezekiah who was 13 when he got arrested um, with the Freedom Riders. When we go to the Ali Center, uh, Miriam Ali, who is Ali's oldest daughter, who's doing some amazing work around mm -hmm. social justice and justice we talk to her when we go to the civil rights museum we sit down with a reverend uh parker who is the cousin of the who was who was with him um when he got kidnapped yeah it was it was heavy so we have all these amazing conversations um on top of the museum so it's we put it out to all schools and said please like and they get to book whatever date time they want to, um it's free it's open to everybody so i'm i'm yeah, grateful that you know, how you can participate in the program how you know where which school you know you were mentioning the schools tell us more mm -hmm. of, of how these two and it's it's for the entire month correct yeah oh yes it's every day and, so we're just started sorry that's <laughs> yeah, a day, day not even yeah i heard everything on my <laughs> So are you, so are you touring schools? Tell us, you know, more of how, and if, yeah. if how do students get to, you know, go and, and see the, the artwork? So what is happening is we have a, a website and I'll, I'll give you that website where um, now it's a little bit more restricted because we probably have close to 4,000 schools that have registered. But once you register, and again, it's all free, you look at all the museums. So you're like, mm, uh, Freedom Riders, Civil Rights, I want to do the Selma experience and I want to do the Buffalo Soldiers. And as a school, you can look at all the available dates and you're like, I want to book my class into that experience. Um, and then when we send you a link where you can activate it and when you come in, there's a teacher, you get a virtual link to the museum, um, okay. which is the 3D rendering. Okay. That, and then we walk you through it. 
we walk you throughout the whole entire thing with engaging conversations um, and tell you what to click on and provide actual context um, and content. And there's videos and different things, even, and I have to just do this one little bit. The Selma to Montgomery experience is probably my favorite because myself and the crew, we spent a total of probably eight to 10 days in Selma um, and Montgomery. And we started at the house where Dr. King stayed and virtualized that inside because everything that's in the house is the exact same things that were in the house when uh, Dr. King stayed there. So from the bed that he slept in to that iconic photo that we know where he's sitting in the chair watching Linda B. Johnson uh, deliver this, all of that happened in this house, right? So they toured the house and then they really went everywhere of importance where Dr. King went. So we went to the courthouse, we went to the Selma jail, we we did the bridge, we everywhere where he stopped, even on the 54 mile march, we got out, we walked, we stopped just so we could experience it, but we did virtual tours outside. So when they leave the house, we're like, okay, now let's go over to Brown Chapel and see how Dr. King and John Lewis met. And then they're in street view, virtual they they're now in front of brown chapel today and they get to look around and then they there's three dots and one dot is like you know this is what happened and it shows a video back then of what they're looking at in real time now and when they leave there dr king just got arrested so now they're at the selma jail and they get to see what it looks like now but they click and the video pops up of him being arrested so it probably one of my favorite experiences it took the longest um but it was so rewarding because we literally Everywhere How they long? rested from Go ahead. create from the creative from the thought. Okay, this is we want to we want to do this to putting it all to fruition, and and now it's 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 February you know fifth sixth. How long did it take you prior to this you know the launching the project for everything to come no, together? It was we're a little late. It was November when all of a sudden all of this kept. That's great. Listen, yeah, you said no, November, I, like, I, November, COVID, November. November, December, January, February. Yeah, yes. So we we traveled, me and the crew, we started a little bit before Thanksgiving and we traveled straight into January 7th. So on Christmas Day, on Thanksgiving, like we, there were, and that's what I love about mm -hmm. And we launched a registration, um, I think the the when schools came back in January, because we were still filming. So we launched registration, I think January 4th, and all of a sudden, we started seeing the first couple of days. I'm like, I want a lot of people to come with the kids to be able to experience it. <laughs> oh, we went home that weekend. I came back and I'm like, okay, there's 1,500 in here. You got to remember, they they select multiple things. So it's not like it's <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, and then all of a sudden it just kept, I think the more and more people heard about it, um, people kept joining in. So yeah, it was a labor of love. Um, and, um, the four gentlemen who rolled out with me the entire time and their friend, the, the beauty in it is that people know to be friends with me, you have to, this, this is your life. Like once you're friends with me, you, you have no clue. So they're all in production. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't, anybody else would do this because we're in the middle of a pandemic have to travel and you're and every single one of them really it did. took a second they were like let's go Absolutely. um and we cried together and every after everyone we would just sit there and look at each other like oh. it was it was heavy emotional well, call me just... from now on if you think of any of these type of projects okay. all right okay. <laughs> yes <laughs> i love it yeah. i love it that's amazing so 12,000 shows. So this is not, you're not, you don't have all 12,000 on at the same time. Or do you do no, the, no, no. the various museums that they're going in? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, I mean, we may have 24 Freedom Ride museums all from 11 to one with 24 different schools. Right. So everybody, because, and because it's diversity and inclusion, black history, and for the security purposes, we keep everything private and a lot team's room so that we know that the students are safe, nobody else can get in. You know, I mean, we've, we've heard so many of those stories of people trying to get in the chat and say, so it's the beauty is that you're in there and it's, you know, if it's Jefferson Middle School, it's the 80 kids from Jefferson Middle School, their teacher and one of our instructors guiding them through this experience. So it's personal and it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's not like there's one and there's just 20,000 kids and nobody knows each other. You're in there with your classmates. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. 
So tell every. I mean, what else is there to say? You have like that's the story, <laughs> the project for Black History Month. If you want, if you want to know what happened, this is what it, this is what happened. And in, in a time yeah. like this, you know, I was having a, I, I, I was having a conversation with my fourteen year old about my six year old, and mm -hmm. you know, with the six year olds and digital learning. My daughter went into kindergarten, so this is this, yeah. this is her world. You know, they, they know nothing else. She's never been in the school. Yeah. She went to daycare. So this is their world. For a four, and my 14 year old was going into high school. So she's kind of perturbed, right? Yeah. My 17 year old, you know, he's like, yo, whatever, as long as I graduate from school next year, yeah. that's fine, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Today was a lot more of the parent, more, more asynchronous learning today, Ooh. right? And I was like, I got to do this and this. And so my 14 was, well, why? You know, why? And I'm like, because this is the world that we're in right now. She said, well, suppose a parent works. I said, well, I work, <laughs> you know, but we have to, right. we have to, you know, you have to transition. This is, it is what it Absolutely. is. We said, we have, I said, that's the whole point. That's why when they're, and I was telling, you know, speaking to her about what was happening right now in Capitol Hill, I said, that's why when they're sitting there having these conversations, for some people, that's just, it's, the conversation's gone one hour too long. So for our children, when, with, with you working with children in the conversation, T tell me a little bit about how you feel about children going back to school and this whole process mm -hmm. of digital learning. And, you know, it, I may give you 15 questions in one because I know you want, I don't want to want you to fall asleep on me, but I have you here, so I'm going to take advantage of it. So, um, so first, tell me about your thoughts on, if you can, on, you know, the, the digital learning, what's happening right now and, and how our children are affected, if it's positive or negative from this whole process. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I think there's a little bit of both. Um, I think, you know, because I sit in a technology space, I can definitely see some of the positives. And even, mm -hmm. even at this program, if we were doing this in a physical space oh. where students had to come and then we were going to show them and like, no way we would be able to reach half a million kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we've had, we've had some amazing professional development and, and financial empowerment and um, just other events specifically for black and brown kids, where when we do it in person because of bus transportation and finances, we end up having, you know, we may have 800, but we did one over the summer where we had 50,000 black and brown boys tuned in like all across the country, right? So when I think about it from that perspective, um, I think that there's advantages. I also have to be honest and acknowledge that technology is taking over the world. Um, I think what this has forced is a lot of teachers and parents and students to get more comfortable with the computer um, where before they, a lot of them other than social media, they weren't, right? Uh, so I, th I think yeah, and, and there's, yeah. there's, I'm sorry, what did you say? I couldn't hear you. It's hilarious to watch some parents because, you know, they're, they're still, it's still, there's still challenges. And they're, you know, they're here every morning. I'm like, get your head. And you see the child, like, I got it. I got it. You know, the kids are learning quicker than the parents, but they, they are. I didn't mean they to touch you. No, you're fine. But that's the beauty in it, though, is that, you know, if, if had this not happened, you look at, um, and I, I'll give this perfect example is that one of the one of my other than this, probably my prize or my heart program, we have this man code program that we created to introduce black and brown boys to technology. And so many people question why, because it was like technology is a male dominated industry. Um, and I had to explain to them, I said, well, I thought that way until this little third grader checked me in Detroit and asked me why I kept doing stuff for girls and coding. And he said, he said, I've never used a computer before. And when I went home and I, I called my best friend, Sandra, she does everything with me. And we started researching and found out that for African-American males in STEM related careers, it's only 2.2%. Wow. So even though it's a, it's a 60, almost 70% male dominated. So we don't talk about black and brown boys and technology because we think girls in code and girls in tech, and, and that's great is needed don't like not mm -hmm. saying that's bad but they've been forgotten about because overlooked. And so, yeah and so many of them don't they, i would never have thought that number based on know. you know my know. co-workers my team yep. you know my yep. project you know, i would never because you said you said brown yep. so i'm thinking brown yeah. and i would yeah. never 
of 2%. That is amazing. It's, and it's, it's scary, but part of it is so many of them, they know how to use social media. And I'm like, you know how to play that video game, but can you make it? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Can you do it? Like, why not be why not a consumer when you can create it? Like, and that's mm-hmm. my, that's the vision behind so many things that I try to introduce these young students to. Um, everything is moving digitally. When I was young, everybody got a job at McDonald's was their first job. I was walking to the airport the other day and I'm like, are those kiosks? I'm like, so we got computers now taking the order and it just, I'm like, so everything is being replaced. They're everything. not comfortable. Mm-hmm. Then that's a problem. I do think there is something missing with the engagement, the interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a, I'm, I've am I'm taken online and in-person class and I'm like, put me in the classroom all day I, because mm-hmm. I, I, I need to feel the presence and the engagement. Mm-hmm. I think teachers, are at, unfortunately at a disadvantage because they can't monitor the student properly to really even understand, like, are you comprehending? Are you understanding? Right. Are you having problems? You don't know if they're getting help at home from somewhere somewhere else. So their, their papers may be coming back perfect, but are they really learning, right? Um, and I think the, the exposure piece too, I think is, um, I think so many people are stuck, don't dream properly, um, and can't widen or even, I can't think about what word to use, but like, because they're not exposed to certain yeah. things. And I think, and um, even again, I've been in classrooms where I've, I've learned so much because reading it and hearing somebody say it is different than when you're there in person, whole different experience, right? Um, so I, I think um, I don't, I had, my mom's a teacher. Um, and so I, I listen to her and she tells me about her, all her adventures. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't have, so I don't like, I, I wish I could speak from the, cause I, I know I cannot imagine. I mean, we've had events specifically for parents and teachers, just not even technology. Like what can we do to support? Cause I cannot even imagine the transition yeah. they've had to make last yeah. year. Um, I, I don't even want to touch that. <laughs> in every room with multiple kids. <laughs> you know? That's the that's the thing. Even I mean, mental health, physical health, emotional health. There's so many pieces that I think yes. we haven't touched and that we're not focusing on um, that are impacting not only our kids but our parents. So I think I think there's some good that can come out of it, but. Um, I, th- I think that in-person class, now, first of all, let me be very clear before somebody sees this and, and takes it the wrong way, safety first. I want our yeah. kids to be safe, I want our teachers to be safe, oh, I want absolutely. parents to be safe. Like that is, I just, let me clarify that right now. So, <laughs> like this is the reality of the fact that we all miss it. I mean, it's a year in, it's a year in, and and, 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 and some, some people have not, tr- have truly, been social distancing, have kept themselves alienated from others, haven't seen their family members, you know, for no. a year, a year. And so we want to go back outside, <laughs> you know, so that's just the reality. Yeah. So yeah, you, you know, yeah. you don't get it. You, with, with that, you know, with all the disclaimers, the reality is, you know, disclaimer or not, we want to go back outside, <laughs> you know, we yeah. want to, oh, but would absolutely. we have, to your point, we would not have been able to experience those children would not have been able to experience what you have given them and what you will be continuing yeah. to give throughout the month had they had yeah. we been outside. And to your point, it's like a double-edged sword. We're able to experience yeah. so much more now and have conversations yeah. with, you know, and do so many different things. Yeah. And then but we're still so limited in what we can do. And it's just this yeah. weird, you know, it's, place where and it's a, and people need to process yeah. it and, and, Treat it like you do a buffet at a restaurant. You pick up what you like, what you need to. Please throw away. Do yeah. not grab. <laughs> you know, that that other stuff, mm-mm. That's, yeah. mm-mm. We don't need to be eating that. Let, let that go, right? So I think <laughs> look at it both yeah. sides. Exactly. Say, like, this doesn't mean that when we go back out all of a sudden, when, yes. you know, everything is this right here and you're just sitting there the whole entire time. And now it's yeah. like, okay, good. Yeah, so I think where, there's. Where are you based? Where are you based, Shai? So let me be clear. I live in Seattle. I'm from Detroit. Okay. Correct. All right. So, 
Yeah, I'm from the years ago. I know Detroit, one of the D's. I know. I know Detroit. I know. Oh, yeah. We have, we have, we have play about me. I am. I, I, was I, am from <laughs> I was listening to a debate between a gentleman from Detroit and a gentleman from DC on the set, like not even two, three days ago. And it was the same thing. Like, and I said, if you don't sound like my friends from Brooklyn, whereas, you know, I lived in Yonkers and they're like, where? Yeah. And I'm like, that's, that's not even necessary. So they were doing like the, the D thing. And I'm like, oh, that's the thing. There's like the, which D is the D? And oh, okay. It's, 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 no, okay. Let's be clear. It's, D, it's the D and it's DC. <laughs> That's you only got two letters. Don't be trying. <laughs> like you do not need to cut one off. <laughs> Sorry, I love people in DC. One of my favorite cities. Let me be clear. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> I asked you because we're we're based. I'm based in Georgia, and you were saying about you know outside. If you were here, you would have been outside. <laughs> They're outside here. I am just here yeah. as well. Some people go to the grocery yeah. store, but so I think yeah. it's where you are as well, and then. But the, to your point, you know, still the kids, the, the laws, the laws, kids aren't there. Kids are, you know, it's it's hybrid. And when yeah. you watch the ones that are in school, it's it's even like, oh, poor thing, <laughs> you know, the mask is on. So, you know, again, yeah. thank you for what you're doing for the children, because I think it's amazing. I'm actually going to call, I'm going to um, email my teacher, my kindergarten teacher now to oh, see if they do have the program. And, yeah, we got it. And, and, and hopefully, you know, we can get this out so people will be able to participate. Are you able to take more participants? Well, yeah, because we have we have selected slots where we know we have availability for teachers. Okay. But for kindergarten, because the museums, because of the content, it's a little okay. heavy. So it's third grade and up. But for okay. our kindergarten, uh, first and second grade, we actually have 15 Black History books that a ton of NFL and NBA players uh went in and read the books. So everything from Harriet Tubman to Hidden Figures, um, and even like Miriam Ali came and read the book about her dad, uh, the children's book about Muhammad Ali. So for the for the babies, um, we have about, I think it's 13 or 15 different black history books that they get to learn about everything from slavery to the civil rights movement. So yes, we have something for everybody. Oh gosh, that is so awesome. I, I think parents would love to hear that. Parents would, because you know, you want to make sure too with, 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 I think there are opportunities as well with this, with the curriculum, you know, you get to slide things yeah. in if you, if you choose to, you know, and with it being black yeah, history, not a, note in, a black history note in every single day, you have opportunity. You know? So yeah, I thank you. Thank you so much. How, tell us how to get in contact? How do we, where do we go? What do we do? How do we get new kindergartners to watch? How do we get our older children to watch? everything <laughs> how do we participate right, so, if we wanted to what do we do got it so two things so you can either go to um i'm gonna give you the website www.aka.ms for slash bhm for black history month 2021 so you can go there and it has the list of all of the museums and all the books and how you can register um and so that's almost the easiest way and then my email address um if, if what you see on there does not meet your needs or we need to figure out something else you can always email me directly and then my email address is s h a v is in victor e r e t is in tom at microsoft.com thank you s h a v is in victor i think i'm not writing it down Thank you. And I'm, I'm repeating the, repeat the website again. Did you say AKA at MS? Yeah. So www.aka.ms forward slash BHM um, 2021. Yes. Perfect. 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 Thank you so much for being here. Thank um, you. It is already a huge success, but we look forward to whatever you do for in the future, if you know, always think of Caribbean Life TV, we're always here to you know, assist you in any way possible. So thank you for sharing. Thank you, and thank you for thank doing you. this for our children. You know, thank you oh, so that's what we're much. To do. Yeah, I'm yeah. just I'm just being open. It's what we're all supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be help. Our lives are supposed to be lived out loud to help other people, whether or not they're young or old. So I'm just doing my part. We're trying to so you you are amazing you are amazing and we truly appreciate you um for all your hard work i i i really you know i can't wait till you we open we open and you we are able to see this in person you know to some yes. elements so
thank you for tuning into Caribbean Life TV. Thank you for sharing your time. I know you're exhausted, so I will let you go. Everyone, this is the amazing Chai Abert. She gave you all her information, um, and they have the Legacy Project. So check it out on Microsoft, and thank you so much for being here. I'm your girl, Rose Solo, um, and this was another special edition of Caribbean Life TV, and we are just highlighting the movers and shakers within our diaspora. And the conversations just keep getting better and better and better. So thank you all for tuning in. This is your girl, Ro. And as always, live bold.